main duties that directors and officers have, fiduciary duties and due care and diligence. The last area that we want, need to have a chat about is all of the other duties that directors have. Well, obviously we can't do them in this subject, and in fact I don't think you could even really do them in an entire degree, let alone a, a subject per se. Um, the, the reason for that is there's so many, right? It depends upon your company and it depends upon the area of law. But here's a selection of the kinds of things that you have to comply with as a director. There are things like taxation legislation, workplace health and safety, environmental laws. All of these are put requirements on companies and their directors and officers and all have a, an accountability mechanism built into them. Well, most of them do anyway. And so part of the challenge when you become a director or officer is understanding the requirements under these different areas of legislation uh, in your leadership role. So why don't we have a look at some of the things that I've just got noted on this slide. So under the Corporations Act, there's a series of other requirements that we haven't been through. Uh, things like continuous disclosure, which apply to listed entities only, right? There's an example of a very important requirement, but it only applies to listed entities. Insolvent trading, section uh, 588G, is a very uh, important piece of legislation in Australia that is on directors, not officers, um, but a generalised requirement that's really important to know, and we haven't been through that because it's a specific piece of legislation. Um, there is disclosure of directors' interests, repeated party transactions. All these are required under the Corporations Act uh, and vary depending upon, for instance, whether you are party to a related party transaction, etc. So understanding a context becomes important. We have other pieces of legislation that affect our duties. Uh, the ACNC legislation, if you're a charity. Health and safety legislation, which requires to most companies. Privacy legislation, again, it's going to be varied by what you do and what information you collect, but most organisations are going to have privacy legislation. So we can see that we have requirements um, based upon the workplace and employees and industry that affect what we might have to do, general business duties imposed on us, superannuation, ACCC requirements, taxation, but also laws from the broader society, uh, equal opportunity legislation, environment law, uh, both federal and state, as well as that specific legislation. And the only way to really understand that is to kind of do an audit when you get into a key role and understand the most important pieces of legislation that apply to you. Now, with all these requirements on directors and officers, it sounds very onerous, and to some degree it is. But it is possible for directors and officers to delegate and rely on the delegation. So they don't have to do it all. Delegation is possible and works to protect you when done appropriately. So what do we have to do to do it appropriately? How do you delegate to ensure you fulfilled your obligations under the Corporations Act and most of these other laws? Let's have a look. So the power to delegate is, is provided by section 198D, okay? So you can delegate, but you are still ultimately responsible as a director. What they have to do, what a director has to be able to do is to show that their delegation was reasonable. What does a reasonable delegation look at? Well, you've got to believe that the person you delegate to, right? The delegate is a person who you delegate to, you have to believe that they're going to act in conformity with the, with the Corporations Act. So they're going to do the right thing. You have to believe that they're reliable and you have to believe that they're competent. Okay, so that's what the court's going to look at. If I delegate to someone and then rely on them, okay, how did I know that they were reliable? How did I know that they were competent? How did I know that they would act in conformity with the Act? That often comes down to things like your human resource practices. Okay. For instance, did you appoint the person properly? Like, 
Did you do reference checks? Did you check that they were competent as part of the appointment process? Um, these kinds of things can demonstrate that you check that they were reliable and that they were competent. Further, what happens when you interact them, act with them? Are there any reasons that you would think that they're not competent? Okay, that's only a question of fact that you can look at, right? Could they answer questions? Did they provide you the information? Did it look like they could do their job? As soon as they're starting to look unreliable, hmm, you start to have to question whether you should take more interest in the issue, whether you can rely on that delegation. So this delegation doesn't excuse a lack of care and diligence. You've still got to think about the issues that are before it. You can't do have a wholesale delegation, but you can rely on someone else's work, provided you've appointed them pro appropriately, and that you monitor what they're doing to make sure that they're maintaining this reliability and competence. Woo. So that's it for directors' duties and their ability to delegate. In the next little video, we're going to have a very, very brief look at the role of the board as a group, as opposed to the individual duties on directors.